Hey friends, it's Awkwardly Random with Cynthia and Michelle, where we talk about random topics. Anything and everything awkward is on the table, so let's dive right in. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awkwardly Random with Cynthia and Michelle. Yay! I always get so excited starting a new episode with you, Michelle. Same. Same. Um, First and foremost, shout out to my sister. It is her birthday today. Ooh, uh, the shout time that we're recording. Happy birthday. So happy birthday, sister. How, um, how old is she turning? 28. Ooh, nice. I think she's nice. like two and a half years younger than me. Yeah, if I'm doing the math correctly. That's amazing. Are you not going to do anything? Yeah, Celebrate? so we're going to make her some tortas ahogadas. Oh. Yeah. Have you ever had those, Michelle? I don't know. Okay. No, no, we don't call. What do you? How? How do you eat them? What is it? <laughs> yeah. So I've noticed. So I learned that this is specifically like this is like a regional food. Like this is very very popular in Guadalajara, and I don't oh. know if it's like just Guadalajara or all of Jalisco. I'm not really sure, but I heard it's like a okay. local regional thing. Um. So they're tortas, right? Mm-hmm. The bread, and then there's like the meat and beans and stuff inside. Mm-hmm. But then you literally drown them in like a spicy salsa and a tomato salsa so they're the bread gets really like soaked it gets wet um oh. that's why they're called tortas ahogadas because they're drowning in all that sauce oh they look like pambasos but that's different pambasos i've heard i've heard that word but i don't know exactly what a pambaso is it's basically um, a torta with like however you want to make the torta, and then yeah. you you coat it with like a sauce, a spice. Oh, sauce. okay. Yeah. But yours sound like you actually dunk it, and there's like oh yeah liquid in the in your plate. There's there's liquid in the plate. Yeah. Yeah. You, you dunk it in there, or you pour it all over, and it's all over the torta, and and even more like it's you're dousing it in that. Yeah. Sauce. So it gets soggy. Yeah, it can get a little soggy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. With the pambasos, I don't think you dunk them. You you coat all of them, the whole mm-hmm. bread, like the, mm-hmm. and then you toast it, and then oh, that sounds and good. And then you put make the torta. Yeah. But that sounds good. I need to try that. I haven't tried that then. Oh, Michelle, they're so good. But we usually make them. Good. We don't make them very often, but we make them for like special occasions or stuff like that. And my sister was mm. really wanting some, so we're gonna make yeah. her some tonight um, for dinner. Um. So. I'm excited. I'll send you a picture of what they look like, how we make them. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see, but yeah, they're pretty much doused in all that sauce. So they're that's very cool. juicy. So that's good. Yeah. That sounds good. But yeah. What are you up to this weekend? What am I doing? I'm chilling. I, yeah, been playing disc golf. I, that's so cool. I, Jesus's friends are having like a get together on Sunday. So we're going to do that. Um, but yeah, just pretty much, I'm just trying to enjoy the last of the summer yeah, time it's getting colder. that's wrapping up. Uh, but I'm excited. I love fall. Fall is my favorite, one of my favorite hol- holidays, seasons. Seasons, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just chilling, trying to spend time outside, disc golfing, hanging out with friends. And so, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I love the fall. I love sweater weather. I love when the leaves yes, change colors. I know. Um, I love Halloween, like going I to love houses. Halloween. All of that stuff. Come so on. and Mia's birthday is on October 30th. So that's whoa, exciting. the day before Halloween. I know. Are you gonna is she are what you gonna have cutie. her wear a costume? She always wears something Halloween themed that is for so her birthday. Cute. I think I'm going to dress her up as something, though. I don't know. I think maybe a little lion or a bear. Because we, we kind she of... She could fit um, either of those. I know. And his is called to her his little bear. Little, oh. little bear, because she's so fluffy. Yeah. So, so I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, we'll figure something out for her. How old is she turning? She's going to be three. Oh, my, oh gosh. my gosh. It's been a minute. It's been a while. Yeah, she was born in... So she was born 2020? 2020, yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. During the pandemic. That's crazy. Little and how long have one. you had her? 2021, I think. Okay. Or January 2021, we got her. Okay, so she wasn't even a year yet. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Wow. Oh, she's so cute. I have yet to meet her. I know, she's funny. In person. You, yeah. yeah, you got to meet her. We'll, we'll figure something out. I don't know. Yeah. 
She's so yeah. small, it seems to me. Like she looks so little. I think I'm just used to big dogs because <laughs> Mila's big. Yeah. Is Nala bigger than Mila? Or well, are they the same size? Um, so Mila's 55 pounds. Oh, I don't Nala's know. Nala's 70 pounds. Okay, so Nala's definitely bigger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would want them to meet. I wonder how Mila and Mia are going to be. That's yeah. cute. Mil- Wait, Mila, Mia? That's cute. Yeah. Mila. Yeah. Her, well, her name's Camila, but we call her Mila. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, so she's she is reactive to other dogs, but oh. not necessarily to smaller dogs. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's like an exertion of dominance type of thing. <clears throat> I, I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Or don't she's know. not as like threatened by smaller dogs. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what it is. Interesting. Um, but she got along really well with my other co- with one of my cousin's dogs, and he's really small. Yeah, Almost what kind like of Mia's dog size. is me? What kind of dog is Mila? She's a pit bull. Pit bull oh. mixed with like a bunch of other stuff. Okay, yeah. Like pit I'm not. Sh- yeah, I. It would be cool for them to meet and see how they yeah. how they are. But I know Mia. Um, it just depends on the dog whether she's okay. reactive or not. I feel like she senses some sort of I don't know how she whatever dogs do, dogs but are really I feel like smart. she senses something from dogs. So she gets along great with Nala mm-hmm. um, and with other dogs and smaller dogs. That's awesome. But then certain dogs she does get reactive or more like snappy. Um, because Mia, although she's a small dog, she has like she also likes to exert her dominance yeah yeah um even with nala um and then my cousin has another dog who's a pit bull and she gets snappy with him and so okay. that's why i was asking what kind of interesting yeah dogs are so smart i know but i'm just like girl you are tiny any yeah. dog can take you <laughs> out like Nala, Nala could take you out, but she's so nice to you. She loves you. Yeah. So I don't so know. Do you take her to dog parks like when there are other dogs there? Or, no, or... I don't take her to dog parks. Okay. Um, I don't think they're as they're not I don't a lot of people don't recommend taking dogs to dog parks just given yeah. like the high injury rates and yeah. it's not really a good way to socialize dogs from mm-hmm. what I've looked up. So I don't mm-hmm. really I do take her, uh, but not all the time we um and if we do take her it's with the small ones with the small dogs but either mm-hmm. way she's pretty she's gone to like day dog daycare centers oh okay where there's all, like she was in the big dog group area yeah. so that's cool yeah I guess it just really depends on yeah. her, how she's feeling and the vibe of the dog yeah I don't know I feel like I get overprotective protective of her because she's so small yeah, so I really tiny. try to like always watch out for dogs just because knowing Nala she always just tries to escape and talk like meet dogs but she's Mm -hmm. never gonna really attack anybody so all right sorry I'm talking too much about it what were you saying no that's good I was just gonna say that we have a dog park here in our apartment complex Mm. um, but we only go to it when there's no dogs there and that way Mila can run around because since we're in an apartment we don't have a yard that's fenced and that we don't have a private yard Mm -hmm. so we have to she has to be on a leash with us at all times when we're outside yeah um but we have they do have a dog park in the area in the neighborhood and we walk by it a lot and if there's no dogs there we'll let her kind of run around and just kind of do her thing but we normally don't take her if there's dogs there yeah I get that it's hard yeah protect your baby protect the babies Mm -hmm. all right y'all um let's move on to the random question I literally just did like a random question generator and I thought this was a whole question (laughs) yeah but okay, what fictional place, Michelle, would you most like to go to if you could? Um, uh, I have a thought of what you might. I know you're what you're gonna say. Well, I, I accidentally know. put I accidentally put my answers in our outline, but I shouldn't have. Oh really? That. I didn't even see. Oh, it, you then. didn't see it? Okay, no. great. But you already um, know me anyway. You would say, let's guess each other's. I think you would say the wizarding world or like harry potter world i don't know i don't i don't know if you want a specific place in the harry potter world uh but probably the school yeah. <laughs> hogwarts <laughs> did Clearly. i get it correct yes 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 you did. The hogwarts school of witchcraft and wizardry that's my number one but i would go yes. all over i would get on the hogwarts yeah. express you know, I would go to Diagon Alley. I would yeah, go to all those places. That sounds fun. Um, 
Yeah, I would go to the Weasley's house. Yeah. So have people. you have you been to uh, Universal Studios? No, I've been wanting you to need since to that go. park opened. It's so good. Yeah. You, you need to go. It's so cool. It, you really feel like in it. Is it in California? It's in California, but they also have one in Florida. They, they put okay. them in both. Okay. No, I'd rather go to the one in California. I've never been to California, so might as well make yeah. a trip out there. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my goals is to go and see it. That'd yeah, awesome. I've been to the one in California, but not in Florida. So I, okay. I can't speak to that one. But the one in yeah. California is pretty cool. But it gets nice. Packed. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So, so that's you one of my go. places. Yeah. So, so you, guessed you guessed it right. You guessed it right. All right. <clears throat> guess one. Guess the one for me. I feel like because you love Lord of the Rings, you'd probably mm-hmm. go to Middle Earth, maybe, or one of mm-hmm. those worlds. Yeah, I'd go to Rivendell. Is that the is that the elf? The elf yeah castle yeah. yeah or the or um or is it where the hobbits live oh i forgot the shire the shire yeah i would love to go to the shire that I'd was my the second shire. one yeah <laughs> yeah i was like she loves lord of the rings i think that's called middle earth like that whole world or yeah is that part of it that's i i think that's part of it okay. um but yeah good choices i would go to either of those you know, if you go to New Zealand, isn't that where they filmed? They had like this area where they filmed the Shire. Like, there's yeah, a place where it looks just like it. I know, but it's it'll look like it, but there's nothing there. So it's gonna be like just, this is where they, which is awesome. But I, I don't know. I think that's if there's nothing really there besides just like looking and walking around. Yeah, like I actually want to experience that country if I go. So yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely do more than just go to the Shire. But the Shire. <laughs> the shia oh okay, yeah you're right they do they did like recreate it or something like that you're right I well i thought I... I saw that circle door yeah like yeah, in yeah. the little house but yeah i think you're right they definitely did that something like i don't that. know if you can go in there like if they decor if they designed it the same way as in the movie and so people can go and see i, I don't yeah. know the details but that'd be cool yeah, to just go check it out cool too it'd be cool if you could stay there oh my god be even yeah more cool you know, they have Airbnbs or like places you can stay at that are themed, right? Yeah. So like Harry Potter Airbnbs. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, oh I don't gosh. think they're here in the US, but I've seen people go to them in Europe. Oh, um, I think. Yeah. That'd be so cool. It'll be cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. Moving on. Moving on, y'all, to the real world ish. There's a lot of messed up things happening. I feel like as per usual. I know. <laughs> Something's always coming up. Yeah. Um, but we'll start with the World Cup, Women's World Cup. Um, as most of y'all probably know, um, the Women's World Cup, the tournament took place this summer in Australia and New Zealand. There were some really great performances on the team level and at an individual level. It was fun. Like these players are super highly skilled. It's, it was just fun to watch. Yeah. And they were at weird ass time. So I would watch the replays um, just because of the time difference. Um, but mm-hmm. so Spain won. That's not a shocker. That's not. Uh, uh, they're they're just a really good team. So I'm not I'm not surprised that they won, but they worked really hard for it. And they were really, really good. But then the spotlight on their victory shipped very, very quickly when mm-hmm. um, his name is Luis Rubiales. He was the president of the Royal Spanish uh, Football Federation, the Soccer Federation. Um, He Mm -hmm. kissed a Spanish player, Jenny Hermoso, um, on the lips without her consent during the World Cup award ceremony. So he claimed, as I was, I was like researching this and reading up on this, I guess he claimed that the kiss was consensual. He also was claiming that um, there's a lot of excitement and um, it just, it was almost like, uh impulsive I don't know which doesn't justify it like he kind of lost control because there was so much emotion in that moment to me that's not an excuse but anyway I digress yeah, it's um, weird Jenny Hermoso said that it was not consensual mm-hmm. and she said that her family that she and her family were being pressured by the federation to um either support him or essentially not speak out against him because he was getting so much backlash for it yeah um so that also was hard to hear and then last i heard luis rubiales was suspended or he's he's receiving a 90-day suspension as 
from his position as president of the soccer federation while they're investigating the matter and he's potentially facing criminal charges so wow. it's a lot of shit happening obviously any sexual act without consent is never okay so it sucks for her you know for jenny and Morso to be going through this and then the the her teammates as well there's been things going on with their head coach who was also fired because uh there was they were saying that he was emotionally abusing them like he the the, the culture just wasn't conducive to their well-being to the team's well-being the players um so the head coach was fired wow. and I guess the Federation is saying that they're trying to, or they're promising a quote, profound and immediate restructuring of the organization. We'll see what that ends up looking like. Yeah. But um, it just sucks. It does. They worked so hard for this and like for it to be kind of overshadowed by all this stuff that's going on and for them to go mm -hmm. through that just sucks. Yeah. It, I wonder if there's like a pattern of that with him I haven't really read up on it but I guess it'll if they're doing an investigation and all of that but I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. I don't I don't know but yeah and overall just like the abuse of power and the stuff that women have to go through you know when it comes to these to these um to their positions in in their professional careers and things like that mm -hmm. and they're already underpaid and for people not to take their side. I don't know. It's just, it's just hard to process all of that. Yeah. It's a lot. That sucks so, yeah. though. But they won and they deserve their trophy and hopefully, you know, they take some good out of, there's some good there that they can take out of all of yeah. that, like ignoring all of that shitty stuff. They can at least still celebrate that they won. Yeah. They definitely did win. Um. So yeah, that's what happened. That's tough. All right. Next. Um, you heard about Hurricane Lee? The one that's coming to Florida? Yeah, Segun. So I guess they don't know the exact path for it yet, mm -hmm. but it's expected to strengthen and intensify. I, I haven't kept up to date. I think it's the last either. time I saw yesterday or the day before, it was like a Category 4 storm. Um, so it's going to create some pretty dangerous weather conditions all across probably the u.s east coast and then up towards canada wow. so it's, it looks like it's moving north so i don't know how much it'll hit florida wow um, so it's moving more north yeah but it's still going to create some really dangerous currents um mm -hmm. in florida and the caribbean so i don't know i guess there's um so there's a lot of climate scientists there seems to be this widespread consensus that climate change is causing these hurricanes to get stronger and stronger yeah um, that makes sense especially with the hot weather yeah yeah we've so been having exactly so they're saying that um with as the earth gets warmer from my understanding the air can hold more moisture right so it's more warm so then that that allows the hurricanes to create more powerful rainfall rainstorms so i don't know man it's scary hurricane this is a very like september is usually hurricane season it, right it's usually around this time when we start to see i think so yeah like really strong hurricanes so i don't know just be safe if y'all are on that side of the world yeah take precautions yeah sounds scary i also been hearing that this winter is going to be rough oh god i don't know in what way i haven't really like looked into it or temperature it's just going to be worse just how like <laughs> summer was really hot it's gonna yeah. be, like i don't know i don't it's know it's just how... gonna suck yeah, people are having those predictions. I haven't really looked into any of that, but that's yeah. just what I've been seeing. And you're in Minnesota. You guys get a lot of snow. I mean, we do too, but I feel like for whatever reason, I feel like Minnesota gets a little bit more than Wisconsin. Yeah, does. especially this past winter, it felt like we got a lot. Yeah. We got a lot. Be safe, everybody. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Safety right. plan. Safety plan for sure. You just never know yeah all right next next we have the maui fires we didn't really talk about it because we um weren't recording podcasts in an episode before but a follow-up there as people i'm sure have heard that there was basically 
huge wildfire that broke out in Hawaii, in Maui. Um, and it that was that happened about a month ago. I think August 8th is when the fire started. Mm-hmm. And there have been um a, ho- a lot of people missing, but I guess an update is that the numbers have gone down to 66. Yeah. And the government has been saying, or people in general have been saying that this was the deadliest wildfire in more than a century. That's um, crazy. So that's intense. And oh my gosh. And also it has been confirmed that the death toll of the fires have are 115 people Mm. and so this has all happened like about a month ago now so Mm -hmm. people are still trying to rebuild recuperate find people and so I just wanted to give an update and to talk about it because we didn't talk about it last time and I think it's important to talk about and if folks can donate to like those local organizations that are helping out that would be amazing yeah um but it's really scary. Just, you know, we talked about the the hot weather and now we talked about the hurricane and then the wildfires. So it really sounds like our planet is going through some shit right now. And so, yeah, just being aware of that and then trying to help other people and taking like precaution or safety measures. Um But going off of that, people are kind of coming at Oprah and The Rock or Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, yeah. Because they they created or or started a fundraising to raise money for folks in Maui when other people already there have started their own donations and grassroots organizations. And these folks are millionaires. And what are they doing right now? Um, So I can understand the sentiment of the frustration of it especially for folks who are actually are native to Hawaii and have lived there and have been displaced by tourism and like people taking the land and stuff like that so I think that there's a bigger conversation within Hawaii and the land on top of what's happening with the wildfires well and they've been asking people before the fires even started or happened that yeah people should not go to just not go yeah yeah Yeah. and I don't know we gotta do better we gotta be better listeners yeah to people and to our planet I feel like our planet right now is like screaming at us for help and we like are just not registering it yeah so be safe and yeah like Michelle said donate wherever you can or share if you can um, to help out the people in Maui. All right. Next, I don't know if we want to talk about this. I can just talk about it quickly um, because it's important to talk about just politics in general. So yeah. Mitch McConnell, who is a senator in Kentucky, reportedly had two seizures within the last month of August slash early September. I don't mm-hmm. remember, but August. Um, and essentially people are questioning our political leaders age and maybe like uh, whether they are able to actually do their jobs given not just their age but I think also medically are they medically fit to continue to do their jobs and I think that that has been like an ongoing topic of discussion on both sides like the left and the right uh, especially with like when Biden was elected president, people were making comments about his age mm-hmm. and also like whether he was medically fit. But in this instance, um, he froze when he was answering questions um, and people are just concerned about that. And many people are saying that he should probably step away. Um, but he has said that he isn't going to step away and that he's going to finish his term and his term actually ends in 2027. So he's got a few Whoa. more years left. So I don't know. Wow. I just wanted to mention that. I, I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but I just think it's interesting how like the left and right both tried to make these arguments against political leaders, um, when they both are dealing with the, these type of issues in their parties. So yeah, it's just interesting. And I don't know. I just feel like our leaders, 
have not been the, doing the best job and how can we call you leaders? I don't know. So I don't know. I don't really want to get into it because I don't think we have that much time, but just wanted to mention that. Maybe we'll talk about it at another time. Yeah. Well, just to highlight, he froze twice. Yeah. So we don't know if this might be happening again. It might. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, moving on. Um, We're going to talk now about Danny Masterson. He is an actor who was most famously known to be on that 70s show. And recently he was sentenced to 30 mm -hmm. years on two counts of, I don't know if you can say that on here or on YouTube, but because it's going to be on YouTube, but rape. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that I haven't followed the trial. I don't know if you followed it. Um, I just know that um, he has been alleged to have s aid and the R word mm -hmm. to other mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. not just these two women. Um, so that really ties back into, you know, what happened to the Spain's national women's team of women continually being sexually assaulted, not believed, having to yeah. fight for justice in a sense. Um, so I think that it's really telling how much, you know, 30 years is a big sentence, especially at his age. Um, but that's only for two, two instances. So didn't this happen what 20 years ago like this yeah. is from a long time ago I mean we don't know right from then until now how many times he's done this since if he's mm -hmm. done it again but I mean this is stuff that happened two decades ago yeah you know and to and for these women to have to live you know and kind of relive these right because he's going it was a trial mm -hmm. or something I don't know exactly yeah. how it all works but to have to relive all of that things mm -hmm. that happened in their past and it's a that's a big trauma and mm -hmm. I just feel for victims of sexual assault and, and it's just mm -hmm. really, really hard. So yeah, but that sentence is, that's going to be, that's yeah. a long sentence. Yeah. And I'm surprised because a lot of people, especially like in the industry or in Hollywood or in entertainment don't necessarily get this. So I'm wondering if we're going to see that as a change. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you have seen the 70s show. Did you grow up watching it? Because especially it has to do with, with like Wisconsin. We're from Wisconsin. So yeah. Actually, no. I never watched it. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I did. I used to watch it all the time. It used yeah. to be one of my favorite shows. But I can't like stomach to watching it. And it's not necessarily like the the best, funniest show ever. I just think... When I was younger, I didn't really understand like the implications of some of the things that were on the show. So yeah, I mean, I think that that is similar to a lot of the shows we grew up watching. Mm -hmm. Like even with yeah. Friends, there's jokes yeah. in there that are actually not okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's stuff that kind of like we grew up watching, and yeah. it's still like I I've always enjoyed that show, but it isn't until now that I'm starting to realize. Wait a minute, mm -hmm. maybe this should not have made it to filming and this should yeah. not have been aired and this is these are some problematic things that are being said in the show yeah I think that's yeah the 70s show is not the only show that's like that yeah for sure now I'm definitely not gonna watch it <laughs> I know no don't so yeah and then there's been like other things coming up like 30 or 50 people had submitted character letters on behalf of Danny Masterson and two of those people were Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis mm -hmm. um and so people I know that they're getting backlash because of just how contradictory they're being in terms of like because I think Ashton Kutcher had started an organization that fights human trafficking and sexual assault and rape of children and so people are just pointing out like I guess the hypocrisy of you know them saying that they have this stance against people being you know uh of of this happening of these type of crimes right and they're, then they're supporting their friend um so yeah that's just interesting to point out I, I don't even know what to say after that like there I think I think that's hypocritical but mm -hmm. I also don't know I don't know what that's like, right? If we, to have a really, and I don't know how close of, of friends they are, but I don't know what that's like to have like a dear friend, like do something like that. And what I 
write a character letter i don't know i don't think so don't because know. they fucked yeah. up even though you're my friend but i mean i don't know i don't know I, yeah it's hard yeah, to say it's messy. but it's yeah it's complicated ultimately i hope the victims are finding some sort of peace and healing yeah. in all of this because that is a lot to have to go through so yeah it is and speaking of going through hard things um our main topic about, <laughs> yeah we're gonna talk about heartbreak uh... stuff. so to me to me mm-hmm. I feel like heartbreak is something more intense like there's a reason why this is a metaphor why the words heart and break come together it, yes mm-hmm. it's a saying like your heart's not literally breaking but I think to me it describes something very intense like a very intense emotional pain and so when I typed I typed it into Google what's the definition of heartbreak the first thing that came up when I looked it up was quote overwhelming distress and then the Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it as crushing grief anguish distress the synonyms for it are agony, despair, misery, pain, sorrow. These are very intense words, very intense mm-hmm. feelings. So to me, heartbreak is like this really deep, profound pain, emotional pain that you feel that could come from some sort of loss. Either you lost someone really important in your life or uh, you lost a certain relationship with them. Like maybe they have not passed, but you mm-hmm. don't have that same relationship anymore with them that's kind of how I'm viewing it. I mm-hmm. feel like people, when we talked about this, when we were planning it, like people experience it and maybe define it differently. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I see it. But I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on that? How do you, what do you, how do you, would you define it or, but yeah, how do you view it? Um, I agree with what you're saying with mm-hmm. your definition. I would also add that like my definition also includes like uh, not just pain, but like a feeling of great sadness yeah based off of that loss or you know I think and I agree with you that it could be from a close relationship romantic with any type Mm -hmm. of person whatever type of relationship by a situation by an event um but I think for me it's more yes pain but it's more emotional pain more sadness like deep sadness is how I would describe how I feel Mm -hmm. sometimes I've felt it that way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I think so too I think it's I think when you're in a lot of emotional pain uh, at least like pain as in like a peer like can you describe that like do you mean like a piercing because I think when I was looking at it too people describe it like as a piercing pain like maybe around your chest or like a crushing pain like, what do you mean? Like, is it different levels of degrees for you depending on the situation or like, how have you experienced that feeling specifically? Cause so, you really de- yeah. like talk about pain where I'm focusing more of like emotionally, like, I don't know if I've ever really sat down and be like, oh yeah, this is the, like what I'm feeling. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I haven't intellectualized sure as much I'm more of like a feel person, not a very like intellectualized, like, let me describe this. Yeah. Well, in a sense, I feel like you're describing it when you say that it's a deep sadness. Like for me, emotional Mm -hmm. pain is sadness. It could be like anger. Like I could Mm -hmm. be really angry about a situation, which I have, and I've experienced it not that long ago. Like my most Mm -hmm. recent heartbreak with like with family and Mm. um or just feeling grief like you're like you're grieving something that Mm -hmm. you thought that you you thought you wouldn't ever lose and to have to lose that Mm -hmm. like or you're longing for something I think that to me all of that is pain emotional pain oh okay that's kind of how I'm seeing it I guess maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of emotional pain as like this umbrella term Mm -hmm. but within that there's all those different things like you're in distress Mm -hmm. you're sad you're angry you're maybe feeling resentment maybe Mm -hmm. you're I don't know anxious I I think maybe I'm having personally having like a hard time associating pain because yeah pain has like a negative connotation for me so that's why I feel like oh what do you mean by that so that's interesting to hear yeah I mean that's how I see that's how I'm seeing Mm -hmm. it but I mean I I think everybody sees it yeah 
I agree. Yeah. I think um, everybody sees it differently. So let us know what you, how you define heartbreak, how you feel it or have felt it. It'd be interesting to know. Cause yeah. I do feel like we all experience it. It's just how we feel it is different or maybe how we express it also is very different. Well, and I like how you said also to like how you intellectualize it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's really hard. Maybe when you're in the moment, you don't know exactly what you're feeling. You're feeling a lot of things, but you don't know yeah. until later on. Later on when you've had time to reflect was. and you're not in that space anymore. You're like, ah, exactly. exactly. I was going through it. You were going through it. Yeah. Speaking of, have you gone through it? Have you experienced it? <laughs> romantically in other relationships have you felt it for other people Mm -hmm. um I would say I have um it's hard for me to really talk about this kind of topic I think for me personally I just never been one to really express my emotions and that's something that I've worked I've been working on it is something that I I'm very in tune to my emotions though that doesn't necessarily mean that I'll express them really yeah um so I have but I think my biggest one that I can think of was be was losing my grandma yeah um when she had passed that Mm -hmm. has been the biggest heartbreak of my life so far and hopefully there aren't many more but I don't know you know life is life happens so um yeah that it's still something that I still feel like I'm working through. Um, yeah. and I have never felt that amount of sadness and mm-hmm. grief over mm-hmm. somebody like my grandma. Mm-hmm. So that kind of, uh, I'm not to like diminish any of my other heartbreaks or experiences or relationships, but that doesn't really compare to what I have experienced before. Right. Um, and so that's the first thing that comes to mind, but yeah, I definitely have experienced, uh, romantic relationship heartbreak and I have experienced, um, like, I guess internal heartbreak or like disappointment within myself when I didn't pass the bar exam, that Mm -hmm. was heartbreaking and soul crushing and ego crushing and everything crushing in between. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also, also like the, the strained relationship that I have with my father since I was a kid, like that really affected me as a child and I know has affected me as an adult. So I would say that was, that has been heartbreaking too and reflecting. And like we talked about, you don't Mm -hmm. necessarily understand all of the emotions when you're going through it. But now as an adult, Mm -hmm. I have been able to look back at all of these situations and really reflect as to how it affected me and acknowledge those. Um, But yeah, and I'm sure there's been other other instances, but yeah, I definitely have. What about you? Have you experienced it in what capacity? Oh, sorry. And I did want to mention in the line of work that I do, I'm an immigration attorney. So with all of my clients, I really care about my work. I care about my clients. And so um, especially in detention work, when someone is detained um, or in removal proceedings where, you know, uh, whether they're going to stay in the United States or be deported, um, that has really affected me uh, because, yeah, it's just really heartbreaking. Um, I don't necessarily really talk about it because I can't really because of client uh, client attorney privilege confidentiality. So, but it is something that I have been working or like trying to process as I continue to do this work and continue. And I know that I'll continue to do this work for a really long time. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But what about you? That's a lot, Mish. That's a lot. I know. <laughs> That's a lot we go through in our lives. I feel like we have this idea of what we want our lives to be, and then it doesn't come out the way, not even close sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yes, I have experienced from what our def- from what we've talked about and how it's mostly defined. Yes, I have experienced that kind of feeling. Um. Most profoundly, and one the first one that comes to mind was when my dad left. Uh, when my mm-hmm. parents split up and that was that was in my adult years mm-hmm. um but I think it's hard when you it just the relationship changed permanently like it's not mm-hmm. going to be the same you yeah. know and I think there's a sense of and my sister was we were talking about it a little bit there's like a sense of grief or mm-hmm. uh, like you're mourning a, a relationship that you're never going to have again um and my dad is is alive and he's 
you know, healthy and he's, he's okay, but we're just not in the same place as we were before, my, he, you know, he and my mom split. And that's just yeah. something that I'm going to have to, you know, live with. Right. And I'm happy for my parents. They're, they're both in good places and they're happy and it's, it's really mm -hmm. great. Um, but that was a very hard time. And yeah. I think the most, one of the most challenging things about that is that, and you were saying how you were still feeling it, right? How you're still mm -hmm. kind of going through it, even though things have happened, you know, a while ago or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're always gonna have some sort of, you know, sadness or feel that grief. We're always going to be, mm -hmm. there's going to be days that are going to be so much harder and days that are going to be easier, but mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still processing all of that. But I think that was yeah. like one that stood out to me the most that still, yeah. that impacted me the most, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh romantically I haven't had too many romantic relationships in my life mm -hmm. um not very many serious I guess relationships or like exclusive like really like committed relationships Jasmine mm -hmm. is my first one mm -hmm. uh being very open and honest about that um mm -hmm. so romantically in terms of like heartbreak I don't think I've ever really experienced that Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's like mm -hmm. um obviously I mean I've had breakups and things but it those are obviously not fun to go through and I think there is a sense of loss obviously there but I in terms of like a heartbreak where you're like you're how you had said it like soul crushing agony you know like I did not I have not felt that in in a romantic mm -hmm. breakup or anything like that oh okay that's not necessarily what I meant okay um I think like I said I think each instance has different levels of what pain you're feeling yeah so yeah. I didn't necessarily say or feel like in my romantic relation like that's what I'm saying like when we're talking about like reflecting mm -hmm. um I wouldn't say that what I experienced was soul was crushing with my past as romantic relationships but it definitely was a uh, deep sadness and a loss of not having that person in my life which doesn't necessarily equate to what I felt recently with my grandma you know what I mean like what yeah. I'm saying is that like it's different and it, it, what I the levels of heartbreak are different for me they don't necessarily equate to the same level of feeling with some of the ones that I've experienced you know what I mean so I'm not okay. saying like oh my gosh it's so crazy that I lost this person <laughs> in this relationship because it yeah. kind of sounds like that but that's not what I'm saying yeah you know because to me heartbreak is like a really really intense feeling yeah of some sort of sadness or loss yeah and I have felt sadness yes but it wasn't I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess so. I, I'm seeing heartbreak as this like really intense thing. And I feel like yeah. I didn't feel that yeah. in past breakups. Yeah. You know? And that's real. I mean, I yeah, know. I feel like you see it more of a binary, like whether you have felt this extreme, extreme feeling or not. And I'm seeing it more as yeah. like a range. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think pain or emotional pain or sadness comes in ranges. I don't know where the cutoff is for when it mm -hmm. turns into heartbreak. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember feeling like I was so, so sad. Like, I don't remember mm -hmm. feeling a deep sadness when I yeah. you know experienced a breakup. And I don't know if that's me trying to categorize heartbreak. Maybe it is. My brain is trying know. to, like you said, see, see it as a binary. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the level of intensity is, yeah. you know, to, to define it as heartbreak, but yeah. I just, I don't know, comparing it to like the feeling that I had, you know, when my parents split that not even close, it's not even yeah, close. Exactly. And then that's what I meant. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like what have I, I've experienced before, like the things that I mentioned before are not even close to like losing right. my grandma, but right. I'm still not going to diminish whatever I yeah. felt or went through that time, because I know that it was hard for me then. Yeah. I don't necessarily remember exactly the feelings, but mm -hmm. I do know that I went through things emotionally yeah. um, that I can't describe now, but I know that that has something that affected me before. Yeah. And I learned a lot from a lot of those experiences. Yeah. I think that there can be a lot of good from 
experiencing things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. It can be hard to see in the moment probably because you're going through it. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think you, maybe there's, there's things to learn from that, or there's things that you can take from that, you know, Mm -hmm. into your other relationships. Um, Other than that, um, I have felt really, really deep sadness. So for a lot of the work that I've done, like, um, I guess in my career, I don't know, my, the work that I do with like family, children and families, a lot mm-hmm. of times I've I had to have conversations about um, diagnosis of their kids. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of parents that I've worked with have m- grieved or mourned um, a future that they envisioned for their children that they, th- their children may not have due to certain, um, you know, differences in their capacities yeah, you know, whether it's like with their speech or with their social skills and things like that. And it's really hard to see parents go through those motions. Um, so that that to me has caused me a lot of emotional pain, you know, yeah. to do that. Um, but it makes me that much more motivated to continue to help children and families. Right now, I work mostly with adults. Um, I don't do yeah. the same type of work that I did um, the past couple of years. Um, but I do remember like that those are some really intense feelings that I had and I would have to like go home and either cry it out or like go on a walk that's when I started to really go on outdoor walks and things like that to just like process things you know Mm -hmm. not bring it home with me but it's hard it is hard um yeah that's kind of my those are my experiences cool (laughs) Cool. Cool. (laughs) nice nice what okay so I guess based off of all of those experiences yeah you're saying that you never experienced romantic heartbreak do you think that has an effect of how you view your relationship with Jasmine or like all of that Um, I guess one could see it that way in the sense that I have no point of reference Mm. um nothing to kind of compare it to which, but I also think that could be a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. This is yeah. new. This is a first for me um, for a lot of reasons. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't find it, I don't find that challenging in terms of me not having had experienced romantic heartbreak necessarily. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really find, I'm not, that doesn't stress me out, you know, and whatever happens with yeah. us, you know, I can see us lasting for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um it'll be hard if it doesn't work out. Um, so far it has, and we're very healthy mm-hmm. and we're very happy. So that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I have no expectations in terms of like yeah. what that's, what that's going to look like in the future. And I think as I grow older, I'm starting to be more okay with letting myself feel things. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that'll help me in the future. If I ever knock on wood, experience some sort of like deep heartbreak again, you know, will help me kind of manage mm-hmm. through that. But I don't know if that answered your question. Um, no, you did. I just don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It was just a random question that I just thought of, of because you had already answered the question. So it's like, what other question can I ask you? Well, yeah. So I think the most challenging is like the intensity of it. The like the deep, deep sadness. Like that's hard to go through. And then mm-hmm. for it to like, you know, for you to experience something five ten years ago and you still feeling you know still going through those motions Mm -hmm. probably for the rest of your life you know Mm -hmm. um I think that's a very challenging part of it I think yeah yeah what do you feel what do you feel is the most challenging part of heartbreak um I think it's the emotions for sure yeah um for me personally I can only speak to the most recent one, which is my grandma passing, because I yeah. don't really remember any other ones, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but with my grandma passing, I guess just under going through the emotions of what I felt, it it was so overwhelming that yeah. I I didn't know how to process them, and it literally took me a year to be able to process my emotions mm-hmm. um, because of how close my grandma, like my my grandma, was essentially like a mother figure to me. Uh, yeah, she raised me with my yeah. mom, and so understanding like what 
all of that meant. I felt like I went through the stages of like grief basically. And it was essentially heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like at a level that I had never experienced and never thought that I could experience and never thought of like, damn, how am I going to get through this type of thing? And I've never experienced that before. Um, So yeah. And just, um, I guess just experiencing that, that, that was the most challenging for me. And then also understanding now, now that I feel like I'm a, at a better spot where I've been able to process everything, understanding that, like, I don't necessarily, the fact that I'm still going through it and I feel like grief comes and goes. Mm-hmm. And I think a challenging part for me was also that we don't really talk about that. We don't really talk about heartbreak or grief or like, it's very minimized. It's very like, get over it. Like that wasn't hard enough. Like that wasn't a big deal. Like people really minimize heartbreak and emotions and stuff like that. So that was also challenging for me and being able to talk about this type of topic with other people because people don't really understand or don't really, it seems like people don't really feel emotions or don't want to admit that they if, feel these emotions and so it's hard to talk to people when they really minimize their own emotions Mm -hmm. so that's been a challenge for me opening up to people that don't necessarily understand um, or don't want to understand because maybe they're going through their own stuff so that's part of it yeah too that I've learned but I also have another thing about grief is that when it comes to my grandma is that being able to still have these feelings kind of is a way of me knowing that like I still have a great love for my grandma and that that's never going to go away and so I've appreciated when that wave of grief or feeling or sadness comes into my life because I remember her and I Mm -hmm. it's just good things to think about yeah that's so that's a nice way of seeing it because yeah I feel like people avoid it because it's so painful or it's Mm -hmm. very like it's hard to process it but if you it seems like you're very welcoming to it like you're receiving whatever's coming to you at the moment you know yeah and I think that's a very strong way to you know process emotions so (sighs) yeah but it's hard it's challenging talking about it is hard yeah so then what would you tell your past self Mish, your younger the younger oh Michelle <laughs> however many years ago about dealing with heartbreak to I think I did a really good job and have experienced heartbreak yeah in all my stages I've always yeah. talked to people about it and so um I've always been really open about my emotions to the people closest to me and just like letting them know how I feel or if I need to talk or if I need something. Um, but mostly also, I guess just telling myself that, you know, I'll, I'm going to be okay. I just need to feel out mm-hmm. my emotions and it takes time. Yeah. Which is basically, yeah, it's just that it's okay to feel what I'm feeling basically, because mm-hmm. I, I feel like a lot of the times I, try to try to be like this badass person who doesn't feel emotions who like is like very straight face and I'm nothing bothers me and I'm okay and I feel like I used to have this sentiment when I was younger so just I guess telling myself that it's okay to feel what I'm feeling and that's mm-hmm. it that's all mm-hmm. would have been good to hear for me to hear because for the longest time I really was like yeah you're good yeah I'm thinking what would you, you know tell how, your younger self yeah you know how you were saying like it, you know it takes time and things like that I think it mm-hmm. does I think that's one of the big things is it definitely does take time I don't necessarily believe that time heals all wounds you know yeah. that time time heals and everything certain I wounds I think maybe certain, certain wounds, wounds yeah sure. but I don't think just because it's been however many years doesn't mean you don't feel that pain anymore or that mm-hmm. sadness or that grief um but I think time helps make it a little bit easier or a little bit more manageable I think like it gets it Mm -hmm. you know you're able to deal with it a little bit um a little bit better over time possibly or process Mm -hmm. it a little bit more over time so I think time time is a big one um I would tell myself that I'm stronger than I may feel or think I am in the moment Mm -hmm. um I think I sometimes tend to downplay myself and my capacities and my abilities so I, Mm -hmm. I guess I would say like you're gonna you're gonna make it through like you're you're stronger than you think you are Mm -hmm. um so don't don't downplay that yeah Um, that's good advice look at us 
to our younger self. We're so mature now. <laughs> I mature. mean, I definitely think, I think I definitely am more, speaking of mature, mature, like I definitely feel like I'm definitely more emotionally mature now Girl, than too. as I was younger. I was, I was all over the place when I was younger, but yeah. Same. We're growing. That's good. We're experiencing growth. That's a good, that's a good sign. So how are you dealing? How did you deal with heartbreak? The times that, you know, with, you had mentioned your family, your work, how, how did you deal with that? Or how are you dealing with that? So uh, I leaned a lot on my support network, like my friends and family. I tried to remember to breathe. Mm. Um, I try to remember to take care of myself in terms of my uh, immediate needs, like, you know, try to get good sleep, um, eat, hydrate. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes I've experienced this where I'm feeling so badly that I don't want to leave the bed Mm -hmm. and I kind of lose my appetite a little bit and Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't take care of those needs that need to be taken care of. And so Mm -hmm. I guess I would advise people to don't forget to take care of yourself and your knees when you're going through something hard like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And like we talked about, like receive those emotions, let them come up, feel, feel Mm -hmm. whatever it is you got to feel. I think that helps me a lot now in the moment. It was really, really hard, um, but it's gotten easier now or it's gotten more manageable and I'm allowing myself to feel it and process it and then possibly talk about it with other people. Mm -hmm. um like right now in this podcast like I think this Mm -hmm. this helps me too even though I'm not going into detail necessarily about my experience um I think just even saying that I went through that Mm -hmm. is a step for a lot can be can be a big step for someone Mm -hmm. um what would you advise or how do you deal with it I also it's hard um yeah it is I try to feel it, whatever I'm feeling, I'll feel it try to feel it. I don't necessarily intellectualize it or like mm-hmm. think about it. It's more like that I feel it. And then I try to also figure out ways to release that emotion. Yeah. Um. I don't necessarily talk about it, but I'll like try to do some, something that'll help my body release that. So it's not so internal. Yeah. Um, or sometimes I do need to like just lay down, and listen to music. Um, and I also just talk about it. I don't necessarily mm-hmm. talk about specifically what may be happening, but if I feel overwhelmed or if I feel sad or if I want to cry or if I feel angry, I will say that and mm-hmm. I'll talk to Jesus about it. He's really he we've been together for so long, so he's so good at like knowing like when I feel a certain thing and he's there to either just give me a hug or listen to me or go somewhere with me or he'll bring me something like I'm like oh I had like a really rough day or like I had a really rough hearing and he'll bring me like my favorite treat or some flowers or like he'll cook for me or like I'll Mm -hmm. come home and food is made so he like being able to lean on people is really important and I've been pretty open with my family about like in general, like we were pretty open in terms of our emotions and how mm-hmm. we talk about certain things. So I talk to my mom literally every day mm-hmm. through text and call. I talk, I text my sisters pretty much every time, uh, every three days mm-hmm. or, or yeah. So we're always in constant communication, which I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but <laughs> they know when something is off or yeah. yeah so I'm able to lean on them. Uh, so if you, I guess advice is just find what works for you in terms yeah. of how you feel emotions, how you let those emotions go, because you, if you internalize all of those things, like it, uh, it can feel isolating to feel those emotions. Um, so definitely try to find a support group that can help you if not find professional help or therapist mm-hmm. or something like that. So yeah, just find what works for you. I think people experience certain emotions differently and it's okay. And ultimately you'll find someone who's in your corner and he'll be there for you. You Mm -hmm. know, it seems like Jesus is the epitome of this next question that we have about how you can support others. (laughs) Pretty much. Because, I mean, he shows up in the way it seems that you need, 
right? Yeah. Whether it's yeah. by just like cooking you a dinner or listening to you, whatever you you know want to express to him or yeah. giving you advice if that's what you need. It seems like he's yeah he's able to read the room, you know. He can. <laughs> We've been together for so long, and we're yeah. able to do that for each other, which I find yeah. really like is amazing because I I know also things that like sometimes he may need me for or like I need to, like I want to do this for him or he's going through this. Let me do this, and so I think yeah. it's it's nice to have somebody like here with me that can do that because I know my family's far away. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I mean. Do you want to add more to that question about how you can support? Because I'm thinking like, oh yeah, you know, um, I, I think, I think it's important to understand that you can, you may not ever take the pain away necessarily for that person, but if you could just like little things, like everything that you said that Jesus does for you really stood out to me because it's little things that I think can help someone um, go through whatever they're going through, right? You mm-hmm. won't take that pain away, but at least just being there for them. Yeah. Meet, them, um, meet them where they're at you know follow their pace if they don't want to talk and they just want you to just be there with them and sit with them mm-hmm. you know if you're able to and willing to do that do that yeah you know? I agree um, yeah definitely reaching out to people I guess like if you know that somebody's going through a hard time reaching out to them reach out to them yeah. um and offer support or show up and just give food or something yeah. that like can just help uh, but not necessarily like you said like you're not gonna take you're not gonna heal whatever they're going through but right just them knowing that they have your support I think is the biggest thing and not no, like letting because I just feel a lot of it especially heartbreak or grief I think it'd be very isolating if yeah. um, you go through it alone yeah I think just showing them that they're not alone right like mm-hmm while you may not have gone through the same thing or don't fully understand what they're going through, you're still there to support whatever they need. And so I think that's like one of the big things It's just show up, mm-hmm. whatever that looks like, right? Well, however they want you to show up and however you're able to show up. Yeah. So good advice, Mish. Thanks, you too. How has going through heartbreak impacted how you show up in your other relationships or in your relationships? and life that is an interesting question I think maybe setting setting certain expectations for yourself of how you show up in relationships or how or what are things that you will allow and not allow in your life Mm -hmm. um in your relationships what you feel like you're okay with and what you're not I think I'm thinking more like romantically, right? I mean, I haven't really had romantic heartbreak necessarily, but I feel like if you've gone through something really hard with a romantic partner um, and you're going, you're starting a new relationship with someone else, Mm -hmm. like maybe there's things that you can take from that previous relationship that you'll know, I really, this was, this part of the relationship was really hard for me and I don't want to relive something like that. So I know Mm -hmm. where my boundaries are going to be you know, Mm -hmm. what are my limits? What am I, what am I going to be okay with? And what am I not going to be okay with? Yeah. I don't know. Just kind of like taking care of yourself and maybe using those previous experiences as points of reference Mm -hmm. as you go into new relationships, maybe. I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I guess it has going through, I guess, heartbreak has impacted me and how I show up for others like more intentionally in terms of more in terms of like uh, people going through grief and like lot like certain events or how I reach out to people who are going through that because now that I've gone through that um has helped me understand that more and so has made it for me to be more intentional about how I show show up for other people but then also how I want other people to show up for myself Mm -hmm. and in terms of I guess like romantic heartbreak I agree with what you're saying that you learn what is okay or what you want in a relationship and what maybe you don't necessarily want Mm -hmm. and that's really helpful um but yeah I think that a lot of this also is important to talk about because we don't talk about in terms of emotions and I feel like people really see like heartbreak and sadness and all of this as like very dramatic when it doesn't necessarily need to be Mm -hmm. um so yeah 
I like how you said that it, it impacts how you show up for others because you've you can relate to them in a mm -hmm. way that maybe others can't because you've gone through very similar things. Mm -hmm. And while you don't necessarily need to go through the same thing to be able to empathize and be there for someone, there is that added layer of understanding when you mm -hmm. go through that same thing. So mm -hmm. I feel like it, it can influence how you relate to them and, and, and mm -hmm. therefore how you show up for them and hopefully in a, in the, for the better, right. That you're able to show mm -hmm. up for them in ways that they really need you to show up for them. So yeah. I thought that was a good point. I hadn't really thought about it that way. So, okay. So to wrap things up, um, did you get a chance? It's okay if you didn't, um, but did you get a chance to talk to Jesus about what he thinks about heartbreak? Have you, did you all have that conversation? I didn't, I should have, but I definitely know that he has experienced it. Yeah. Uh, maybe he didn't say oh, it was heartbreak, but yeah, I definitely know of his experiences and we've gone to a lot of, gone through a lot of similar experiences yeah. too. And maybe that's what helps us show up for each other. So we definitely have talked about it. Um, and I think it's the human experience to yeah. go through heartbreaking events, relationships, Agreed. or experiences. Um, so yeah, yeah. What does so, he think about it? Yeah. What does he? Yeah. yeah. What does he think about it? Or I guess maybe you can ask him in the for a future episode. We'll yeah. Check in. I think I think he would think that it's part of the human experience. Uh, yeah, that's part of life. It's part of life. Yeah. And just surrounding yeah. yourself with people who can help you go through life or who you want to do life with, yeah. essentially. What about you? Did you talk to Jasmine about <clears throat> heartbreak, what she thinks about it, all of that? Yeah, we actually did talk about it a little bit. Um, well, we've had these conversations before. Um, just I learned a lot about her past and mm -hmm. her childhood and her family and everything that she's gone through. And I've never met anyone with the experiences and the level of trauma and heartbreak that she's experienced it's mm -hmm. it's it's inspiring to me just to see how resilient she is and she could have turned out so differently mm -hmm. with what she went through um and everybody's you know trauma and heartbreak and experiences is different not to say one mm -hmm. is harder than the other I just have this is just something that I I don't know anybody who's gone through all of that that she's gone through and so I'm just really mm -hmm. proud of where she is today and all that mm -hmm. she's accomplished and the way just she's really strong mm -hmm. and <clears throat> so with that said she has described her heartbreak as something that has altered her and I don't know mm -hmm. exactly the details or mm -hmm. I don't have the I, I I can't share more than that on this podcast mm -hmm. in terms of details yeah. um but uh she does encourage people to keep loving and to allow themselves mm -hmm. to be loved and she mm -hmm. wouldn't want like some someone who's experienced heartbreak to like she wouldn't want heartbreak to keep someone from showing up and trying new relationships and things like that and shouldn't mm -hmm. stop you from developing relationships with other people so mm -hmm. she just says like you know I've gone through so much heartbreak but I'm still gonna keep loving and I'm still gonna I'd rather yeah. love you and risk experiencing heartbreak again than not loving again um mm -hmm. and yep. I thought that was a good point because sometimes it can feel like I just want to give up and I don't like, mm. I can't, I can't do this. I can't experience this ever again. And so I'm not even gonna try to, you know, mm. form a new relationship. Maybe. Right. I feel like that, mm -hmm. that can be a way when you're feeling such intense emotions like that, it could feel that way. Like, Oh my yeah. God, this is really hard. I don't think I can go through this ever again. Uh, yeah. So I'm not even going to try to build a relationship with yeah. someone else. Um, yeah. So she just encourages people to just keep loving. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So I have her permission to share that on this podcast. Um, nice. So yeah, let us I know like what y'all think about that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's definitely true. I think people experience it differently. And yeah, maybe sometimes it just feels so like a lot for certain people. And yeah. Yeah, to keep forming relationships. Yeah it's hard it, yeah it's it's a lot to process and as I'm reflecting on this mm -hmm. conversation we just had um I still don't fully know exactly mm -hmm. like I haven't fully intellectualized it like how mm -hmm. you said um but I think this conversation hopefully helps other people too 
Yeah. You know who if you you know if you listen to this, I hope you took something out of this and I yeah. hope <laughs> that you know that you um feel more comfortable maybe just, even just saying your emotions out loud to yourself in the mirror, you know, yeah. or doing something to allow you to heal or just feel better. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why we decided on this topic because I think this topic is super vulnerable and yeah. it's hard to talk about. It's hard to, I don't And I also agree with you. It's hard to intellectualize certain emotions, even though we may feel them, it's hard to intellectualize them, which mm-hmm. I don't know if you necessarily need to do that for everything, but yeah. it does help. And yeah, definitely a way to take care of yourself because everyone feels feels emotions, whether it's heartbreak or not. And just knowing how you specifically deal with them or manage them or feel them or need to like release them, I think is super important. And lastly, I would say, I just thought about this just now, what may be really, really hard for someone may not be hard for you but that doesn't mm-hmm. mean you got to minimize what they're going through yeah and vice versa right like something mm-hmm. could be really 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 hard for you that you've gone through and to me I would I maybe I wouldn't see it that way or maybe for me it's mm-hmm. not as I don't know maybe I didn't feel those types of emotions mm-hmm. doesn't matter um mm-hmm. if, whatever they're going through I think it's important to support that person mm-hmm. um yeah but just be kind to each other and support each other yeah I agree and we support you whatever you're going through we support you. Yeah. We're here. All right. Yeah, we do. Hope you're doing well. Take care of yourselves. We'll catch you at the next one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.